Hi everybody, welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at static objects. What are they, why you should use them, and how to use them. So let's get started. We've got our base project open. It's just a standard project and I've created a new scene called static and I've put a few objects in here so we can have a look. I've got a number of spotlights set up. Um, and we're going to use this to show what a static object is. So let's pick our ground floor here. And if we look in the inspector, we've got an option for static. Now, what is static? So static allows you to tell Unity that this object is not going to move. It's not, it doesn't need to calculate any physics on it. And it can use that to add into our nav mesh so the ai component of unity will know that this object is static and it can walk around on it and it, we can use it for reflection probes so that a reflection probe can see this object as static and 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 bake that onto the reflection probe so let's do a couple of examples of that so i've got all these objects here and none of them at the minute are set to static. So let's just select all our objects in our hierarchy. So I'm just holding down shift and clicking at the bottom and that will select everything in between. And let's just turn on static. So now we have told Unity that these objects are not going to move throughout the game and it can calculate stuff before we activate the game. If we look into this drop down, we've got a number of options for static. Typically, you will have everything as static, but you can, you may want to mix and match each of these, and I'll put I'll do an example of one of those as well. So let's start first with light maps, which is one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why you would mark an object as static, so that you can pre-calculate the lighting in a scene before you run the scene. So at the minute, we've got four lights in here and I'm asking them to cast each of them to cast shadows. Now that's going to be extremely expensive on the renderer. If we were to run the game it has to calculate all these shadows that you can see on the floor here. It has to calculate those at runtime which can be extremely expensive. So what you can do is mark these lights as baked lights. So if I drop into each of these and you'll notice mode is set to real time. I'm just going to switch all these to baked. Area lights can only be baked, so that one's there by default. And spotlight, let's change this to not that one, sorry. Let's change the mode to baked and this mode to baked. So what we've done now is we've told Unity that all these objects are not going to be moving. These lights can be set to baked mode so that we can pick up on any static object and we can pre-calculate this lighting. So let's have a look at that. Oh, and additionally, I've got a reflection probe in the middle here and this will look for any static objects within the bounds of this box and it will create uh, reflections which we can then use on our materials. And we'll go over these in a lot more detail. I just want to give an example of the of why you would mark something as static for light maps. So if we jump into our lighting setting over here and we'll just leave everything as it's set and we'll just press generate lighting. So now what Unity is doing is calculating all the lighting based on these static objects and it will place that information onto each of our objects. So when we're running the game, it's already calculated all this information and we don't need to do it in real time, which increases the performance massively. Now generally speaking any big object particularly big objects that are not going to be moving you want to mark those objects as static so unity knows it doesn't want to calculate anything obviously that's going to be dependent on your game but as a general rule if something doesn't move mark it as static and you will save performance so we can see now that unity has calculated all this and we've got a much better look we've got some reflections going on in each of our on our objects and the lighting has baked in and we can see that so if i select this sphere and we move this out of the way you'll see the shadows are all staying where they are and that's because this ground plane has now got calculated um 
lighting and this is not a lighting tutorial so I'm not going to go over all the light settings there but you can see that by marking these as static it allowed us to pre-generate this lighting. The other reason you may want to use a static is for the navigation mesh. Now that's it's quite an advanced topic and it's using the Unity AI but it's actually really simple once you get used to it. So again we've got all these objects here so let's jump into navigation just clear that off and let's press bake so this will look for all objects that are marked as static and it will try to generate a navigation mesh and all these blue areas here that you see it will allow the AI to sort of walk in this area now this is a good example of when you may want to have something like map static let's say this this cylinder here you may want to have this as static in the light map but you may not want it to be stopping the um, navigation agent from sort of passing through this object so if we jump into the inspector and we look in our drop down menu we can see we've got a navigation static setting so if we untick the navigation static setting and jump back into navigation You'll see before it was saying you can't walk anywhere near this object. Now if we rebake, because this is not marked as navigation static, it essentially this um, ignores this object and it doesn't try to calculate around this object. And you may want to do that for a door or something where you've got a collider on it but you don't want to stop the agent from walking through it. So static is very useful. You'll see, you'll see we've got reflection probe static that will do the same thing. It will just it will make this object so it doesn't appear in this um, in this reflection probe. So if we turn, I've just turned off the reflection probe static on this object, and now if we rebake the reflection probe, this object will disappear out of this reflection probe. And you can see it's now no longer part of that reflection probe. So you've got a lot of control over what you do with these static objects. And that's it really. It's a, it does get into more detail than that once you start uh, working out what each of these does. But like I say, typically if something's not going to move, move in, mark it as static to save the performance. If you want to generate lighting throughout a level, so we may have we, you can have a hundred baked lights and once you bake that out it will obviously take longer to bake it but it wouldn't affect the performance as long as you mark these objects as static and again for the navigation is one of the main reasons why you would have an object as static to allow the AI to walk around there so I hope this video was useful I hope to see you in another one thank you very much for joining me